Next up in the AI generation adventures, we have something that's not images for once. This is, this article does not exist. As it says at the top here, this is a demonstration of the latest state-of-the-art language model trained by Allen Institute for AI using Transformers. Every 30 minutes, the application will grab the top headlines for Reddit or Hacker News and have the Transformer dream up each article from scratch. Please be aware that the Deep Neural Network has fed, was fed only the headline and the domain name to produce the entire article. So in other words, all these headlines are real headlines. But the bot takes the headline that is a real headline for something, and then it makes an assumption as to what that headline is describing. I've already clicked a few here. I didn't read them extensively, though. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip the ones that could demonetize videos, because it's a shame about that, but you know, whatever. Um, let's go ahead and click this one. Newly revealed financial reports show Trump owes millions to state-owned bank in China. Report. Okay. A Washington-based Chinese company is challenging the Trump Organization's use of the Chinese government's bank in the U.S. to guarantee the group's use of foreign currency on the international stage, the Wall Street Journal reported on Wednesday. An the company's investment of significant sums in the New York real estate firm came from the creditor of the state-owned China Development Bank, the journal said, citing a person familiar with the matter. In addition, Trump, whose company has borrowed for CB, received a loan from anonymous and disclosed creditors, owes much as $4 billion by China's Guangzhou Stock Exchange or Journal reported. The source did not say if the lawsuit was about the company's bank loan or whether Trump paid the money back. This is actually... I'm impressed. This AI has written something that doesn't... that actually makes sense. Trump publicly denied any wrongdoing with the connection to the loan, telling the New York Times and Center that debt was not going to do anything with my money. The financial records also show that businesses of California companies owed 96588 from the Singapore Exchange Journal reported. There's a lot of the journal reported here, which is kind of weird, but... The FT also reported earlier this month that China and Singapore among those trying to shake up a co bank arrangement between Trump and the Vancouver real estate firm. Which, what, what real estate firm? The Trump organization does not respond for requests for, for, for comment for more money. That was all written by an AI, and that's actually really impressive. Because nothing here sounds off. Let's, uh, let's get something a little more outlandish. Let's see. Bleach manufacturers have warned people not to inject themselves with disinfectant after Trump wrongly suggested it may... Okay, we're going to skip that one. <laughs> like I said, I have to skip certain ones where YouTube gets fussy. Um, Osaka's mayor... Okay, honestly, though, with the news as it is right now, this is kind of difficult. Okay, here we go. Largest ever hole in the ozone layer finally above Arctic finally closes. Let's try this one. For the first time, the vast ozone layer above the Arctic, a chunk of gas that coats the surface of the planet and can threaten people and nature, died Tuesday, a milestone scientists call a rare beat, and leaves a gaping hole less than half the width of Manhattan. So, a chunk of gas died on Tuesday. Gotcha. The tiny gap, which... A gaping hole less than half the width of Manhattan. The tiny gap, which occurred after researchers measured ozone concentrations below 5,000 feet, means that ultraviolet light emitted by such fields as the North Pole lost 99% of its wavelength and was unable to penetrate Antarctica. North Pole is not Antarctica. North Pole is not where Antarctica is. Well, okay. Actually, I'm bad. At, I'm bad at geography. It is, but like, what the fuck? Wait, no, it isn't. My brain is really stupid right now. But what the fuck? <laughs> Scientists say that the hole will raise questions in scientific circles about what caused it to exist in the first place. Now that it has, new questions also arose about who is responsible when. Scientists have long been questioning why ozone seems to have vanished in the Arctic, and one of the theories may have cited that the climate change scientists deliberately moved the ozone layer to the Antarctic, <laughs> depriving it of absorbing ultraviolet light and killing it. What? <laughs> what did the ozone? Why did the ozone vanish in the Arctic? I know, because climate change scientists moved it. Because <laughs> you could do that. They moved to the Antarctic and killed it. They wanted to murder it. They wanted to murder that that ozone. <laughs> More than 25 years ago, scientists discovered the planet had an upper layer of ozone that covered just over a quarter of the surface and held between 62 and 87 percent of its UV value, which gives off hot ultraviolet light which it, that attacks the human eye. Oh, is that what it does? In the Arctic, where it was less abundant, researchers could barely see a molecular layer, only one three nanometers thick, the size of the ozone hole. So scientists dug up the lakes, depleted their own ozone, and scattered to the rest of the world, all in an effort to find a cause of the hole. <laughs> um, alright. Me at the University of Washington's observatory in, in Seattle, in June 2000, they documented what they thought would be the ozone hole's total height. 
The researchers concluded the Earth had been receiving only about 75 to 90 percent of the levels of UV light normally released from most star large stars, going to strong ultraviolet flashes. John Ellis, a, a conservation scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, said the oxygen content of the sun was too low to reach humans and birds. <laughs> Specifically, humans and birds. Dogs, cats, reptiles, bugs, fish, they're fine. Humans and birds, they're gonna be in trouble. And the Earth is not had not been absorbing enough UV light to sustain the fine particles that are necessary for energy production and widespread scientific research. Okay. Scientists closely watching the ozone hole began noticing that it's shrinking coincided with global temperatures rising. In June 20, 2007, they measured its total height at a very small level, and September 1st, 2009, measured it again, but by about 60%. What the fuck does that sentence mean? <laughs> In a follow-up study, leading scientists in the field last year concluded the most likely cause was climate change, because rising temperatures could suck up as much as 90% of sunlight. Theory is known as the planetary dark side theory. What? That does not sound like a theory name that matches what you're talking about, but okay. Uh, in a separate paper in July, they pointed to a small part of an area along the Siberian border. Okay, Siberia. All right. They used satellite data, magnetometer, uh, magnetometers in storms in the Arctic, and a computer model they, that predicted how long the ozone hole would stay closed. Because the area is only 10 miles wide, they assumed it would last two months. The Arctic ozone hole was created by the during the 1950s and 1980s. It's quite a large time gap. Uh, during the effects of the blowtorch-powered refrigerators and kerosene stoves, <laughs> which aided trapping of ultraviolet rays. I'm sorry. Blowtorch-powered refrigerator, you say? <laughs> you do realize refrigerators are supposed to keep things cold, right? They don't need to be powered by a blowtorch. Typically. <laughs> okay. Uh, the shuttering of the tiny hole was part of a long history of human operation in the atmosphere, said Peter Witt, a lead researcher of the NOAA Polar Science Center in Boulder. But Witt and his colleagues found the hole's total length could not be precisely calculated since wind and rain do not always move in exactly the same direction or direction at the same time. Okay, But they, could, but they said that by measuring how the ozone shelf collapses, they could slice the total length of the ice-free space by about 80%. What the fuck is the ice-free space? The bottom line is, we are not going to see the problem resolved, Witt said. Scientists are now wondering if past and present trends will change. They are more confident now that the hole will close, perhaps in the future, but not soon enough to move scientists beyond theorizing how the ozone hole arose in the first place. It is like the ozone hole fading. Catherine Hayho, Hayho, a, a climate scientist at Texas Tech University, said in the telephone interview. There is no question about it. It remains. Wait. It's like the ozone hole fading. There is no question about it. It remains. What, what is this? What is this? Is it fading or does it remain? I don't. Last week, scientists reported that global temperatures and temperatures had increased two percent in the last decade, more than the rate seen for compatible comparable periods after the 1940s and 1950s. This has led scientists to conclude that human activity, including the increasing amount of carbon dioxide released by the burning of fossil fuels, was the main cause of the shift. It remains to be seen whether or not the gap will last or if it will collapse. Hayward said, "There is no high certainty anymore." She said. But it appears that we have something good, and it just cuts off right there. What an article. What an article. <laughs> so, this AI bot is pretty capable of writing some articles. Uh, funny that when it tries to talk about fucking Trump, it apparently gets it just right. Hmm. Uh, but, okay. So that was an interesting one. Let's see. Um... What else? What else looks interesting here? That isn't related to banned topics. Um, Brazil. Well, let's go to this one. I clicked. Well, I don't think I read this one. I just clicked it. Brazil justice minister to quit after bon Bolsonaro fires top cop. Rio de Janeiro. Brazil's justice minister has resigned after he and his aides, accused of refusing to intervene in the firing of the top police officer, spoke to the country's leading op opposition leader, who encouraged a call for him to resign. Okay, file photo. In one of several embarrassing episodes of President Michael Timmer's struggling administration, Fernando P Pimentel, who also heads the main left-wing opposition group, resigned after controversy forced Timmer, has been dogged by allegations of graft for more than a year. Graft? Like skin grafting? Or to replace his top eight as special prosecutor? The dismissal of police chief George Hadid in late January by President-elect Jair Mons... Bolsonaro. Why did I pick a Brazilian fucking article? <laughs> Raised questions about the state of Brazil's world-class police force. 
and world class, huh? And caused uproar among Brazilians who were outraged that the police commander was fired ahead of a Supreme Court hearing on accusations he mishandled evidence in a corruption scandal. Opposition leader Wagner Morora questioned why Pimentel had not intervened sooner. At that time, there was not information to point out what happened going in the wrong direction, Morora told a news conference. I mean, this is just kind of a boring article. Like, this one just seems reasonable. So it seems like it does really well of, like, pol like heavily political stuff, but more non-political news it has trouble with. Let's try to find something that... World's loneliest dolphin dies after two years living in an abandoned Japanese aquarium. Yeah, sure, let's do that one. The, the Pacific Blue Dolphin, which was recently photographed dying in Japanese aquarium for Animal Planet, is now only a small pod floating in a water tank full of fish. What? <laughs> recently photographed dying. It's not only a small pod. Okay. Uh, a rare Pacific Blue Dolphin that was caught in Japan last year has died after having two years in an abandoned aquarium. The stunning animal was recently photographed dying in Japanese aquarium for Animal Planet after living there since 2011, I guess. Its death is left the animal's home, and it's immense sadness, conservation experts said. <laughs> the animal's home is sad that it died. The environment itself is sad that the dolphin has passed. Wow. The piece of footage showing the 13-year-old dolphin has seen a life blooming from obscurity into a future-rich vein of life. What the fuck does that mean? I fell in love with the Pacific Blue Dolphin in 2011 when I saw a photo of it, said Jichi Fujino, a marine mammal curator at the Ichikawa National Parks. Parks? I helped photograph its face with mask, and it looked as if it was true. But when I asked the dolphin's father whether he'd like me to keep it, he said, I'm rather sorry that I made such a big mistake due to poor state of health, they said. So this person asked the dolphin's father if he could keep the dolphin, and the dolphin's father said, I'm sorry I made such a big mistake. Did not know dolphins could talk, but apparently they can now. On the same morning, we encountered another dead mammal. It was not the Pacific Blue Dolphin, but another lion-like Lionfish-like marine fish. Uh, okay. I felt sad that I made a mistake in giving the lionfish to the aquarium because they seemed to swim away with a big weight on their back, so I helped save it by taking it outside. Dur okay. During our feedings, this wasn't spotted once in the wild. I took the lionfish back to the aquarium, and the great egret attacked it! I never saw the Pacific Blue Dolphin again! I like how the story just switched off to talk about lionfish for some reason. This image shows the Pacific Blue Dolphin swimming into the mouth of a rare jumping fish at the Ichikawa National Parks in northern Japan. Oh, that's how it died. It swam into the mouth of a rare jumping fish. Look, it was just a vorophile. You can't blame it. <laughs> it swam right in the mouth of a rare jumping fish. Dolphins of Devore. Yeah, the lionfish did not have long-term memory of the cute Asian dolphin. That's because it got gurgled. After starting its fangs, we saw it in a video. Though we did not find it alive in another sense. In another sense? <laughs> Even so, the lionfish seemed to be very excited by it. I then fed it with a lionfish in another video that made it very handsome and attractive. Is that Morvor? It is believed that an emotional mother pushed the 1,200 pound dolphin off the reef with a fistful of bills. The animal was nicknamed that after it sank off the coast of Igali City, Japan. Whoa, hold on a minute. That's one fat dolphin. That is an obese dolphin right there. What? 1,200 pounds! I, I, okay. That jumping fish had quite a mill then. <laughs> the discovery of the Pacific Blue Dolphin came after CCTV footage of it leaping and swimming with its mother, featured in Animal Planet's World's Lonely Dolphin in February 2016. What? <laughs> the footage shows the pair seen jumping up and down off the reef of Migai City in northern Japan. The footage was aired by Animal Planet in March 2016. But the footage was in February 2016. Okay, whatever. The dolphin is seen in the video be seen below getting caught from the front of a Japanese baby crocodile recently. What? Did the dolphin also get bored by a Japanese baby crocodile? Because it sounds like it did. Sofa was quite kinky. Decided to weight gain a bunch, then get eaten by a bunch of things. The dramatic footage of the endangered mammal can be first seen on Animal Planet on February 22nd, and continues for some time before the well-like mammal appears. <laughs> well-like mammal, well, at that size, yeah, that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable uh, term to refer to it as. Well-like mammal, indeed. <laughs> um, for the short footage, it seems as if the bottom of the video is reflected in the ocean. Towards the end of the tape, the species is seen gradually washing up on the beach. Oh, okay. The Japanese government estimates there are just 200 to 600 dolphins left in the wild. I don't think that's true, but I hope that's not true. Rangers shot dolphins in the mid-2000s and released them back on the sea to breed, or put them 
to sleep in preparation for hunting. What? <laughs> what rangers? Rangers are like people in the forest, usually. What? The bottom of the video is reflected the ocean. Towards the end of the tape, the species is seen gradually washing up on the beach. You said that already. Experts say that the breeding effort may have led to an explosion in the dolphin population, which is why there's 200 to 600 left. And they may have even spread to the United States. Did they? Like, did they buy some land or something? The experience led to hope that whales, dolphins, and seals may be reaching North America. Uh, okay. Experts say that the breeding effort may have led to the explosion of the dolphin population. They may have even spread to the United States. Thank you. You said that twice. Wow, that was an article. Yeah, I think I know which articles to pick now. Stay away from the political stuff. Pick the more random news stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, what, what, what can we do here? Um... Hmm. Chinese writer Fang Fang faces backlash and death threats for Wuhan Diary, a journal for tens of millions of readers. Now it's about to be published abroad in several languages. He's facing national backlash at home. Let's try this one. <laughs> the article lies. Go figure. Hong Kong. Hong Kong writer Fang Fang. That's quite a name, by the way. Has been facing criticism and death threats for a two volume biographical journal, Wuhan Diary, which has been published in five languages, including English, French, German, Japanese, and Turkish. Chinese traditionalist writers and scholars have lamented the author's new works and challenged the quality of the characters and passages in the journals for potentially causing irreparable damage to the standard of literary culture. Wow, that's an intense, that's an intense, <laughs> that's an intense insult right there. Potentially causing irreparable damage to the standard of literary culture. You could destroy re reading as we know it with your book, is basically what that says. We could destroy the concept of literature as we know it with what you have written. Like, what? Wow. That's a fucking burn. All right. Since being published in English in July, Wuhan Dryer has drawn what some have called a crossfire of Chinese patriotic political commentary for those who subscribe to faith in their own government in Yichun and Chinese historical figures. Others are writing critical articles from the other sides of the internet. An estimated 10 million copies of the journals are estimated to have sold, with that sales potentially reaching 20 million, according to an audible. <laughs> according to an audible? What the fuck? Okay. The first part of Feng's journal sold 150,000 copies in Chinese newspapers in July. Wait, they s sold in Chinese newspapers? What? An additional 1.8 million copies went to distributors overseas. One Diary, which spans 13 volumes, is not the first to be published for in English. However, Hong Kong writer Ken Chi Hui pioneered the one-writer-one-book style for English language fiction by publishing his novels in the form of individual books. What a concept! A novel that is one book! Uh, the number of Chinese publications Ken Chi Hui's work rose from 50 by 2004 to 1,000 by 2013. That's a lot of fucking books, buddy. That's, uh, I mean, wait, writ by, uh, by himself? That, okay, he wrote 950 books in less than 10 years. Good work. Um, Hong Kong writer Ignacy Viti, what a name, has recently pub has regularly published books in German, Japanese, as well as in English. And was the author of a number of books in Mandarin as well. Fang's publisher in Chinese, China's Alker International, whose founder, Yang Ji from China, I would hope so, is a renowned historian of the Marxist Linus culture. Okay. Uh, and he believes the Chinese public deserves to have an interest in books that they are allowed to read as long as they are written with the utmost respect for the revolutionary process and traditions. What the fuck does that mean? Fang's publisher was quoted by Hong Kong newspapers by saying, Whenever I write a literary work, I try to express the latest generations in the era of those who created the Ming, Shangjing, and Shandong musical groups. Those are not musical groups, those are periods of culture in China. But sure. <laughs> um, the launch of the journals was intended. <laughs> yeah! The launch of the journals was attended by a number of Chinese academics as well as the journals' creators. But there was an unexpected rebuttal last week from the French Ministry of Culture, which claimed the Chinese publisher had an exclusive arrangement with French publishers for Wuhan Diaries printing. This resulted in the first edition's commercial auction, which went unsold, reporting to a report on the Paris-based website C9 Daily. Still, the publishers are insisting Wuhan Diaries not intended to attempt to further weaken the literary traditions in Chinese culture. <laughs> According to Ministry of Culture, Swark's person, the project aims to inspire literary culture among our people, a new generation of writers and scholars with four roots, new friends, and foreign exchange trade relations. The spokesperson noticed the Ming era book novels, including novelists Deng Xiaoping and Li Hadong, and the Shinan of Zhao Qilang, 
can only be talked about in words and help illustrate the meaning of the times. Can only be talked about in words. Can only be talked about in words. How else do you talk about things? I guess you can use sign language. The Lang Jing Din this is okay, that's kind of mean to people that can't that have to use sign language, jeez. Lang Jing generation. A traditional Japanese uh, Chinese literary periods of the 1700s and 1800s sees the political and historical dramas being depicted in the journals that spoke station said. What does that mean? Goodness me. So much nonsense. According to historical sources, Zhang Teprin, the daughter of Li Xing, the first secretary of the Central Committee of the Party of the People's Republic of China, set up the journal. Hoi, who is related to Kim Hoing Hoi, is a lieutenant in the Ministry of Culture of the former Chinese People's Republic of China. Hoi has had introduced the concept of the journal while working for the Ministry of Culture according to the first edition of the journals. Fang's translator at Alcar International, Mr. Adam Goihain, uh, has had suggested publishing Wuhan Diary after Yan Wang Shichang. God, there's too many fucking names. Who was a famous writer of the Ming, Shanjing, and Shedong musical societies. These are dynasties, you asshole! <laughs> Goihain also requested Fang's help in adding the non Jia phrase, which means wise men in Mandarin, to the English edition of the journals. However, the publisher's M and the journal Wuhan Diary will remain in Chinese and published in other languages. We hope people will use. Alright, well, I hope they use too. My goodness. So, this AI only writes 20 articles at a time, but every 30 minutes it will grab new ones. Um, so, let's see if, I, we, if a refresh will actually give us any new ones or not. Sadly, it won't. Okay. Um,. But actually, you know what? Let's go to science, because I forgot there's actually sections up here. Oh no, let's go to Ask Reddit. Let's go let's change sections. The world news kind of kind of you know, kind of spongy. It's kind of uh, kind of a lot to uh, have, so let's see here. Um oh. What non sexual thing are you a slut for? What is the what is the AI going to write for this? Comedy show comedian Tracy Morgan said he's kind of a slut for dating a woman who apparently didn't ask for sex. <laughs> what? TMZ reported. <laughs> that sounds a little wrong. During a staff show Wednesday night, Morgan, 30, responded to questions about dating-related topics. He said to, that a woman on stage during a recent show in Pennsylvania told him to play the dick. Okay. According to Morgan, the comedian responded with sexual jokes. You look so sexy to the first other woman that you meet, Morgan told the woman. Anytime I think about you, I ask you to get sex. I didn't ask for sex. I'm a slut. What? what? According to a transcript script obtained by TMZ, the woman in question was then on stage during the show. Okay. In a follow-up phone call, Tracy Morgan said he would like to meet the woman again. Tracy Morgan, go to Boston Globe. All right. Uh, okay, let's see here. Um, hmm. Uh, what's your favorite movie line of all time? Yeah, random AI. What is your favorite movie line of all time? That was a bad spy movie. The lie is admittedly a stupid excuse used by dozens of high-profile actors and Steve writers over the years to refer to movie action, and you know that story well. But if you're an avid movie reviewer, it can lead to some pretty interesting nuggets. Here are a few of our favorites of surefire movie movie lines. Movie movie lines? Cool. Divide by age and by the latest film release date. Number 11. Slap a popcorn at me! It's a chilling French line that applies to every solid popcorn maker ever. Okay. Ah, it's exactly the same time of the day as right now! Although Martin Sorkis never really came out with a sequel to Mean Streets, he would certainly have fun doing such a scene. Someone's on the left, and it's Audrey Hepburn, model turned movie star. The lie is incredibly funny at that moment, but I also really like that Sorkis never actually really actually speaks to her. I finally said. Not many producers have been paying that much attention to their actors, but Landis' famous line for Sofia Coppola's Loss of Translation is classic for that very reason. Loss of Translation, what, a, what an appropriate... Okay, this line. Number 15. The aircraft is so controlled... By the way, we started at number 11, I just want to point this out. We didn't start like a number 1, but whatever. Number 15. The aircraft is so controlled that there are number 2s and number 3s on the ground at the same time. Notice that this one applies to a long-running television show, but the line doesn't really apply to the movie it's based on. Number 16. Speechless. Er, uh, not. This is one of the less memorable lines, but it does an effective job of conveying the bad nature of computer-generated actors. Number 17. I can still hear you when I speak to you. Okay, that actually sounds like possibly a quote. 
The creators of American Horror Story really figured out how to use the hospital stories we read about witches as campy set pieces in their latest series. Witches? Hospitals? <laughs> Numbers 1 to 3 is so good they gave everyone a view of my heart attack, so they had to use the next top 10. Ah. Number 18. I thought I was speaking to you and... A screen! We're not sure what came over her head here, but spaghetti western fans, and even some actors, would definitely agree that this came from Atuane Fakua. Number 19. Wow, we can't ever not look at you in the face. Many writers crafted this line for celebrities, and occasionally, it works. Occasionally, it works. Top line, occasionally it works. Number 20. I'm here for her, and not for me. Another, I think I'm a real ugly bastard, monologue from Martin Sarkos. Well, who is this Sarkos person that keeps showing up? He's, he's done so many lines. Number 21. I'm not who I say I am. This cute line is almost too cute. That's not a very cute line. That's a very intimidating line. Ominous line. Not cute. What? Number 22. Someone's had enough of this after so long. The line is also works nicely in a scene when a man uses his stupidity as a metaphor for getting a job. <laughs> number 23. It's late at night, Dad, and it's time to finish my paper. How's that for simple yet hilarious? I... Number 24. I'm not interested. Most of you would need a good line to remember, remember Frank Norris from Point Break or Jeepers Creepers, but I hesitate to give this one to Kurt Russell. Russell. He already, he's already said all of the lines, and I think he could use one more. Number 25. Looking for the nose, Annie. It just works. Thank you, Todd Howard. Thank you for closing us out. <laughs> what the fuck is this art? This is okay. I think I found where the I think I found where the bot does the best does the best work. Let's see. <sighs> My goodness. What should I go here? Uh, at what moment did you know you fucked up? So, Carrie, you think you should quit your job so I can have a period around college and continue working for the people I love? Then you should quit and buy a house. And when I tell you that I am forced to work, I will say, I'm sure you don't get it. A period means I can't take care of you when you go off to college. George Orwell, I'm Animal Farm 1961. Is I don't think that came from Animal Farm. Read the next small article, Tucky. Okay, the next one that's small. In the movies, when characters reach their breaking point, they leave their job and go off to college, try to, try to reconnect with their love interests and perhaps even start a new business with maybe an entrepreneurial couple, or even to have sex with a stranger, <laughs> okay, for fear that it'll come off as immature. Well, that is kind of immature of you, and stupid. But it's not all roses and smiles on the pages of a novel, it's mostly loneliness. Loneliness with a sign, four-letter name. And then the characters crawl off to college and aren't seen again for another 13 years. What the fuck, that's a long college term. That is much more than a way of saying, go away, or to say, I don't care to stay around. I don't care what people say about me. It's a deep moral question that is particularly relevant for women. To young women, new parents, and mothers to our kids, when you're about to go off to college and feel the need to control, you don't just ditch all responsibilities. You mindlessly hop back on the dating scene and spend the first year of your post-college life feeling nothing but lonely. Why is it so hard for women to question what has happened to their lives? But it's not just because we don't have time, although that is important. We spend the bulk of our lives behind the desk, which is more exhausting. It keeps us out of town, and at the end of the day, it often forces us to run into our friends and old exes and dishes out like a well-loved soap opera. We can't let things go. They're creating us. We can't let that cloud our judgment and the decisions we make later. For the most part, many leave the workforce find their careers, relationships, and families an empty force. When we have to come back alone, when we have to work alone for a very long time, our relationships are constantly changing, and suddenly the job comes back, and the distance is back and the distance past, but it never feels like it's never really come back. What is this saying? I am not as sure that girls who aren't going to college are less likely to go to college. I, It's just harder. I believe it's the pushback against this notion. Too many women, especially young women, don't want to find themselves when they take a break. Too many win men don't want to sit around while they're in graduate school, figuring out what, where their career careers are headed. I was in a movie with a couple, and we're doing one scene where they're talking about this crisis they're in. You can't do that anymore. The guy sits back, and they talk about not allowing that stress, just not allowing that stress anymore. If he works on a career, he has a life. I want to tell the guy that he might not always have to worry that he will be the one who leaves. The, a woman could be more in charge. She re can really make the decision. That, that is a longer road out of this. 
you were in a movie and you were doing a scene. Somebody said a line. You wanted to get take them aside and say, like, dude, it's okay. Dude, they were doing a line for a movie. <laughs> that wasn't their actual thought pattern. <laughs> they, took this, they took the movie role too seriously. It's probably a place I can become more comfortable in, but I think it's... What I'd like to see what I'd like to see is more folks asking themselves, can I live beyond my work? What I know is, for someone whose career choice isn't working out well, they often become a parent, partner, or spouse. Or both. That that's three things. Okay. The more women ask themselves, can I live beyond my work? They'll probably say yes. They'll put themselves in positions that, where they can manage a full life without damaging their reputations. What we have to do is grow up. For young women and men to say yes. And in the end that would be a very satisfying change. It's like traveling and buying a home together. You can't live like that forever. It's way too exhausting. What is this? Well, how does this fit with the article title? Okay, whatever. Let's see. What's a fan base that scares the hell out of you? Okay, this is short enough for Tucker. What's a fan base that scares the hell out of you? Is this actually any good? Let me kind of give it a skin. Skim. Um. Uh. Oh, what's something better? Come on. What's your creepy Airbnb story? This looks boring. Uh, that's, that's, that just looks like a news article. Um, let's see. Um, what do you think about when you can't sleep? I'm going to read one more article before we switch off for this. But I'm looking for one that's a good length. I want to see the demon summoning one. Which one's that? Demon summoning. I don't see that. In order to summon a demon, I must be placed on each of the five points of the pentagram. Which items would be needed to summon you? Why is there... What the fuck is this one character? Um... Um... <laughs> Hold on a minute. I don't know if I want to read this article because of certain things you find in the second paragraph. I don't like this word. I don't like this word at all. Are you guys not seeing the word? I don't know if I want to read this aloud. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word. I've never heard it before. So, I'm going to skip on that one. Um, what conspiracy theory do you believe in 100%? Um, hmm. A little too wordy. Actually, let's go to Not the Onion. Oh, yeah, Not the Onion's good. Not the Onion, if I recall, is, uh... Yeah, it's, it's... The Onion is, if you don't know what The Onion is, it's a, it's a news site that creates fake news that might sound believable or might not, and it's... It's just basically nonsense articles. It's, it's more or less for fun. Um... Let's see. Lysol Maker, don't... Please don't drink our cleaning products. No. I'm looking for something not so wordy. Facebook is rid of pseudoscience ad targeting category. Hmm. This, this bot's doing a good job making interesting titles not actually that interesting right now. Okay, I think I'll use this one. We're just gonna read this one with Tucker's voice. It's a bit long, but I'll still do it. <laughs> of course, last time I read something long in the Tucker voice, I got an actual donation, but yeah, it's fine. I'll just do it. <clears throat> Animal resembling mountain lion seeing seeing an OKG. I need a drink. Hold on, I need a drink first. Water, water. Water supply me. All right. All right. Animal resembling mountain lion 
seen in OKC. Game wardens confirm large house cat. Eastern Oklahoma. Just hours after wildlife wardens sent a news release to local news, the OCDC confirmed that the mountain lion spotted in a middle class neighborhood in Oklahoma City was a massive 12 foot high house cat. OEC, OCDC Department of Wildlife Resources Division Chief Carol Cole said he's in our he's on our radar for this house cat all over the state of Oklahoma with good reason. The news release quoted the OCDC Division of Wildlife Resources Chief Carol Cole stating he's in the middle of the state but he's been seen along the Memorial Drive Highway near Memorial Drive. Our wildlife officers have been monitoring him for weeks and we have information suggesting he's a large large cat and at least one previous cat in the area. Although local media outlets reported that the massive 12 foot high cat apparently lived in a large Texas home. <laughs> Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. USFWC says the house cat is not a pet. In addition to the big black and white beast, the OCDC also said that it believes the house cat has invaded at least nine Midwest states. The photo has been distributed on the internet, including OKC Post City Pages. OKC Post City Pages reported that the epic house cat search occurred this evening after two parents showed up at, at their house with footage of the rare beast. However, a law enforcement source who has been monitoring the mountain lion and the couple said that the couple didn't record a large animal. One of the parents is armed with a camera, said the source, so she or he could test for signs of a mountain lion. <laughs> test for signs of a mountain lion via camera. The other parents believe the mountain lion is actually a pet and that there is one at the front of the home. The wildcat searchers are combing the neighborhood around the Bears Ridge Golf Course in southern Oklahoma City, not far from Oklahoma City University. The Bears Ridge Golf Course home will be deeded to the university's community free of charge. The town has no rules restricting the practice of animal agriculture. What the fuck is animal agriculture? But snakes and other animals can be found in Bears Ridge neighborhood. The OODFW confirmed that the home was occupied by the billiards rooms owner who the OCDC Division of Wildlife Resources Division Chief said would not be named. They actually captured and killed a moose about six months ago in the Bears Ridge Golf Course grounds, said the OCDC Division of Wildlife Resources Director Bill Gillian. It is with much disappointed that we would recognize animal movements that appear to be purely urban or homegrown. Homegrown? Gillian continued. Our internal investigations are focused on what humans do or are doing with any wildlife that may be involved. The OIFRS Central Issues Working Group is working with Game and Fish and other regulators to address animal control issues concerning our large animal populations and other issues. <laughs> to submit an incident to be investigated by the OCDC Division of Wildlife Resources, email goodbydog at gmail.com. Goodbye dog, what that sounds ominous. Call 405-203-53987 for 98 of the Tippian, Monday through Friday, and request an animal control caller field report. I really hope that's not a real number, but I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> what is this story? Animal agriculture. You know, I, I love me some homegrown, uh, homegrown like uh, mice. Good, good times. It's it's great when it's a great feeling when you plant them yourself. You know. Um. <laughs> so yeah, that was um, that was this article does not exist. We there's even sections we haven't looked at like science and hacker news. Obviously, this could be a, this could be a bit drab at times, but there's some real gems here as well. There are some real gems here as well. Goodness me. So yeah, have a look at this if you enjoy a weird read.